Does Harbaugh's presence at this game, I mean, I can only imagine the ovation he's going to get when they introduce him. Does this put more pr uh, pressure on Kyle Shanahan this Sunday, given that the, the 49er fans are at Kyle Shanahan's neck this week? If I'm Kyle Shanahan, I don't feel the pressure. I mean, it's like, well, you ain't win nothing either. I don't even know why they're honoring y'all. So, you know, and if I'm Shanahan, at least I know, hey, we, I still have a chance. I still have a chance to redeem myself from some postseason losses. Like, yep. Jim, you can't. And you need to stop getting your ass whooped over there in Michigan when it comes to the big games and playoffs and some of those conference games. So That's true. Uh, I don't feel any pressure. At least from his presence, is just like, you know, all right, like, you know, we've done the same stuff. Went to multiple NFC Championship games, a Super Bowl, we lost, you know. But right now, I think because of how long ago it was and, and, the, and the fans that love the players from that era, yeah. I think that's why you it's being made into a bigger deal. But, again, I still don't understand why the hell they're bringing them back. I don't, I don't get that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the pressure to me, if I were Kyle Shanahan, is just knowing that he's going to get the big ovation that day. And if I lose, if, he, if Kyle loses, knowing that you're probably going to get booed harder than you've ever gotten booed. And just having both of those things happen in the same place at the same time, the optics would be bad. I mean, it might be something they even play on SportsCenter. You know, it's almost like having the Seahawks eat turkey on your field. It's bad. I would have... I would really want to avoid that if I were Kyle Shanahan. So that's my might be why I'd be like, "Hey, Nick Bosa, you good? Can you play this week, please, please? Hey, Jimmy Ward, can you put a can you put a cast on that and play, please?" Just saying. You think there's a chance the 49 fans boo Kyle? Yes. If they lose, I'm not saying they lose. They could win this game, and in which case they will probably carry him out on their shoulders like a hero. But if they lose big, if they lose 38 to 17, something like that, I don't know. It could happen. It could happen. Do you think now you talked about the pressure that it might put on Shanahan? Yes. Do you think – I think there's a bigger question here. All yes. right, we didn't go over this before we started recording, but – Sure. Does Jim Harbaugh's presence put pressure on Jed York? Yes, I knew you were going to say it. Yes, yes, it does. But at the same time, maybe Jed looks at it this way. Maybe he's like, you know what, I'm a little disappointed with Kyle, but I'm also scared to, to move away from Kyle because I don't know who, who to go to. And I, fans might really turn on me. Well, not if he gets Harbaugh. Everyone loves Harbaugh. I put out a poll yesterday. Who would you rather have coaching the team, Harbaugh and Fangio or Shanahan and Ryans? It was close, but most Niner fans that follow me said Harbaugh and Fangio. I mean, it would be kind of popular. They've won two. So I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it seems like a legit option for Jed if he can pull it off. Now, I don't know if, if Harbaugh's into it. I mean, can you imagine how much butt Jed would have to kiss to make that happen? Like how much money he would – not butt. It would have to be money. It would have to be so much freaking money. I just don't know if he would do it. I don't know if he should either. Like you said, he didn't win a Super Bowl. What are you really bringing yeah, back? Yeah. A guy who hasn't been in the league in 10 years? But I'd say you also didn't see the lows. And that's no. tough too. Because if I'm – think of the Dallas Cowboys. Why are the Dallas Cowboys the biggest brand, brand in the world? Why do they make the most money in the world? And I say in the world. I don't know. I know in America they do. I know the soccer is big in other places. But just they are the most polarizing sports franchise. And they ain't won nothing since 90. They ain't been to a championship game. They love to be able to celebrate uh, bringing back yeah. some guys because, oh, man, 2012, third, uh, 11, 12, 13, we were in the NFC championship game. We went to a Super Bowl and we done it again. They ain't had that type of success. But mm -hmm. as long as you just don't have a whole lot of lows, I think it still keeps everybody engaged. And yeah. one thing that the 49ers had with, with Jim Harbaugh was – there were not those lows outside the very last year where everybody knew there's a lot of weird stuff going on right now with this team, whether it was all the injuries, which they had a ton of injuries at last year in mm. 2014 14. season. They did. And then before the season, the talks about potentially trading uh, Jim Harbaugh to the Browns. I remember hearing that. That was like my That's senior right. year of college. I'm like, this sounds crazy. All right, whatever. But I think it yep. might've been true because he got fired yep. a year later. So, yep. uh, you know, I think all of those things, uh, you didn't have the lows. And yeah. your lowest, lowest, lowest moment was 8-8 eight and eight yeah. in a really weird season. Yeah. So if Jay York, let's, let's say that if York would have just stayed out the way, would that season have gone 8-8? Eight and eight? Because I think that the players, everybody felt the tension between the coach, the owner, mm -hmm. and everything that was going on. Maybe if Jed d does what he does now, right? You don't hear Jed talk, really. He stays away. He's out the mix. He's out the way. You don't see him in press conferences. None of that. Would that season have still been 8-8? Eight and eight, Or would they have gotten more out of it because everybody's so engaged? I think everybody was done. I think that last year, I think 
I think Harbaugh was done. I think everybody was just like, yeah. oh, we're, right, we're done with this. They were still 7-5 and five at one point. And I think that here, here's why I think the optics are going to be so weird this Sunday. Because everyone still feels like Harbaugh was fired um, and it wasn't wrong, wrongfully terminated. He was wrongfully terminated. He had, a, he had like a, seven, a 75% winning percentage. He never had a losing season. And when he steps on that field, it's going to feel like it's his team again. He's going to be wearing Niner stuff. People are going to give him a King's ovation. It's going to feel like it's his team and like it always should have been his team. It's going to be like the Gruden thing with the Raiders. They got with a Gruden and he was a winner and they never really replaced him. They had a bunch of guys who kind of fumbled the opportunity. And while Kyle's done some good things, he's still under 500. And if he loses this weekend, it's just going to feel like it's, you know, a lot of people are going to feel nostalgic is what I'm saying. They're going to feel nostalgic for the good old days. And they're going to forget the bad parts of Harbaugh. Yeah, and at some point yeah. you got to feel that, right? Like no matter how you feel about somebody, and I think that's what's going on right now with Jay York on Kyle Shanahan. Man, you can really like a guy, but at the end of the day, the results are the results. And right now, we're talking about year six and under five hundred as a coach. That's not ideal. Yeah, and from Jed's perspective, maybe he's feeling nostalgia for the Harbaugh years. And a lot, ten years have passed. Maybe the uh, the bitter resentment between them is gone. And if they can like. Kiss and make up in front of all Niner fans. I mean, that would be quite an image, too. I, I would really be nervous if I were Kyle. If I see Jed and Harbaugh, like, shaking hands. And I was like, uh-oh. Uh-oh. I better win today. And they may. They just might. So we'll see. A lot of people have talked about the these coaches in the sense of, oh, man, Kyle Shanahan, he had to rebuild a team and tear it down. Uh, Jim Harbaugh, he took, took over this just this amazing team that everybody mm -hmm. wanted. And... I'm like, do y'all remember 2010, 2009, 2010? Yeah. Because that's not exactly what the conversation was surrounding the 49ers. Uh -huh. They were viewed closer to the 2017 team, like maybe a little bit better. But yeah. I think we see what a lot of these guys have become, right? You see what Patrick Willis has become. And he was good then. Like, so, I mean, that's an outlier, right? You, you had him. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. they had a few players that were like really good, but. Nobody wanted Alex Smith back. I remember. No, I'm a diehard fan. And I was like, there was why no are they market. bringing Alex Smith back? He's supposed to be gone. Get rid of mm -hmm. this guy. Mm -hmm. Like, And nobody was looking at Deshaun Goldson and Brooks and all these other guys. Like, oh, man, these guys are just going to be so amazing. But no, one wanted no one wanted uh, Whitner or, or uh, Carlos Rogers. No one wanted right. that. Yeah. The, the thing to me was, and when people start talking about the better coach, right, that's a conversation yeah. that's going on. So I'm just chiming in. Who gets the most out of their players every single time they step on the field? And I thought Harbaugh did a damn good job. However he did it, whatever tactics he used, I, I hear, you know, a little quirky guy. But, man, he got the most out of those guys. So, yeah, when he shows up and he and he coaches the way he does and he brings those guys along, now all of a sudden you're hella good. When you're hella good, what happens? More all-pro players, more Pro Bowl players. You get a lot more light. But I guess you can say, oh, he inherited his team. But I think – Okay, I'm just going to take what I have and I'm going to make the best of it. And he did that to the highest level.